And we have a few questions for you, and we'll begin with uh, Senator Baker, the Deputy Chair of the Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, uh, witnesses, for your presentation to the Committee. Uh, Diane Bergeron, the National Director of Government Relations and Advocacy of the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, and uh, Corey Earle, who's President of People First of Ontario. Now, <clears throat> my question uh, is first directed to Diane and Corey, if he feels uh, that he wishes to comment on it, uh, we would welcome the comment. This bill that we have before us, you have testified, uh, Diane, that uh, right now, at this very moment, the uh, Chief Electoral Office has had the right under legislation you mentioned for 14 years to consider alternative voting processes for the reasons that you stated. But they have not exercised that right. Uh, you are now saying that in this bill, it will further complicate matters because that will be taken away from the Chief Electoral Officer and he must receive the approval of the House of Commons and the Senate. Is that your, one of your main points, that the bill actually restricts the bringing into place of necessary changes to the Elections Act to facilitate voting? The, the, the key piece for us is the, the fact that the, the legislation, the bill as it's worded currently, gives permission and the process that the Chief Electoral Officer would need to go through in order to exercise that, that ability is will be more onerous on him than it is at this point. However, the wording in the in, in providing the direction to the chief electoral <coughs> officer right now it's just giving him permission. So what we're suggesting is that the bill be strengthened and that the wording be strengthened to be more um, directive rather than permissive that would require the chief electoral officer to test the um, the alternate voting processes. In other words, the, the uh, imposition of the word shall, the Chief Electoral Office shall uh, uh, attest alternative voting processes. Yes. That, that's what your point is. Yes. Uh, let me uh, ask Corey. Corey, you mentioned that, that, that vouching shouldn't be eliminated from the, uh, the law. Could you elaborate a, a bit on that as far as uh, your organization is concerned and the people you represent? <clears throat> Absolutely. Thanks for the question. Um, look, at Belchin, um, many people, whether it be in group homes, whether it be someone who doesn't have a family, or not necessarily have a family, but someone who <clears throat> lives at home, um, doesn't have the proper ID. And I think when you look at ID, you have to be very clearly that a lot of it may want picture, a lot of it may want address and all that, that's fine. But I can tell you right now, a lot of people cannot still come up with that. Um, you know, Mino, who's next to me, I mean, if she needs someone to vouch and she forgets her ID, who perhaps could live 10 minutes away, um, and, and because difficulties that she could be facing, I'm turning around saying, sorry, go back home and get your ID, even though I may not have ID, and then but I'm there as Ms. Manolo's friends for over 10 years, yes. um, who know her better than anybody. Yes. What I'm doing, what this act is clearly doing, is it's eliminating that. It's saying, sorry, come with ID or you can't vote. I've heard the side where, it, where uh, there's part because it could fraud or something like that. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, there's so many things that can be done easily now. Mm -hmm. We have a whole lot of things. You don't need an act to, to put that. But I can tell you right now that the outburst between Belgium in this, in this country is beyond bigger amongst anybody. Because you're taking, a, you're literally taking a person's rights away. How many decades have it taken for people to become folded as Canadians? But yet we're saying, guess what? <laughs> um, I'm the age of 28, and I'm now, after only been voting for the last 10 years, and guess what? You now have to come to Belgium. So what if something happens to me hmm. and I lose everything? Hmm. People also lose ID, and, and that's no exception when it comes down to that. 
but it, you don't get dried in the next morning either. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that right now. So what we're saying is take the Belgian part out. Mm -hmm. Don't create barriers. Mm -hmm. This act should not be built creating barriers for people. It should be about encouraging people to go out and vote. People are going to vote for who they want, regardless of whether you, put, whether you want to make barriers or not. People are going to vote. But I'll tell you right now, they will make hell rave it, though. Mm -hmm. And you will know about that all candidates means. Mm -hmm. Because people will then raise that. Mm -hmm. I met with the minister, and I have all great respect to the minister, because I, I, mean, I, I really do, um, for the fact is that he acknowledged and, and met with us and put <coughs> some of these things in act. says a lot to his credibility. However... It doesn't, the buck doesn't stop there. The buck stops with this committee and moves forward to saying, we've heard it loud and clear. There's protests. I mean, you look mm -hmm. at the media, there's protests out there against mm -hmm. having this belching in there. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch any reports because I really give my own assumption mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the matter before I do that. So that's where we're coming up. We're not backing down from that, mm -hmm. uh, and we won't back down from it. So. Thank, thank you, Corey. And thank you. Senator from. Thank you, Chair. I want to thank our witnesses for being here today. I appreciate your testimony. Uh, Ms. Bergeron, I'll start with you, and um, thank you for the great work that you do. Uh, I, I'm, I totally understand uh, your concerns. They're, they're very serious. I'm just wondering, though, uh, are you aware of any jurisdictions elsewhere in the world that does have um, a success with online or telephone voting? I mean, obviously, you know, all the controversy around this bill is around voter fraud, and that's, that's the big concern, is balancing, you know, accessibility with protection against fraud. So that's obviously the big concern about Internet voting. Do, do, you, do you have any examples you can share with us of where it works? Um, for phone and Internet, we're currently doing the research on that to, to try and look at the, in the states and so on. One thing I can tell you is that I have voted completely independently in a municipal election. Um, they have a, a machine that, that has large print on screens. It's got the ability to change color contrast, and it has an auditory output and feedback. And um, in the last three, I believe it was, municipal elections, I'm from Edmonton, um, and uh, we in, in Edmonton, I voted completely independently without any assistance. I could check my ballot to make sure that it was all accurate. Mm -hmm. And the machine, at the, when you're done putting in all the information, it spits out a piece of paper that you then take in just like everybody else. So it, mm -hmm. it has no online <clears throat> process to it. Right. So you're saying we could, there could be a kiosk option. There, that is one option that, that could be made available. And CNIB is happy to work with, with government to, um, to do the research and to look for alternate. And also for testing. Um, it, you know, for, for the disability community, but specifically... I would say from where we're concerned is that with the vision loss community, often what works for sighted people doesn't necessarily work. We think it works because it speaks, but we really need to have the, the processes tested by the people who will be using them in the future. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Earl, I, I, like, I heard your idea about having the candidates' photos next to the, uh, the names, and I know in other countries, uh, particularly where there's literacy issues, that that's... that's <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> We're hip, hip, hooray for that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it, it is uh, it's an accepted practice. It's probably a very good practice. My only question to you is, to have you met with Elections Canada? Because as I understand it, that's a measure that they, that's, that's entirely up to them. It's not up to government how the ballots are presented. So that would be, that would be something you'd have to discuss with them. Have you, have you had any meetings with them? So I have the fortune and privilege to sit on the Elections Canada committee now that's just been established, that has been brought up. Um, I mean, the, the question is, I mean, you, perhaps it can be amendment in the bill, right? I mean, that's, that's what was that, let, let me just finish your question there. Um, that was actually brought up. Um, and they said, A, can they do it, right? So second ball is, can, it, can there be amendment is what was talked about. In this bill, um, that would actually make sure it happens. Um, so that was the suggestion that we got, um, and then we said, well, Quebec does it, um, and perhaps others do do it, uh, but no, not really a whole lot of clarity, except that it could uh, be an amendment to the bill here. Mm -hmm. But it also could be done administratively with Elections Canada as well. And see, I didn't know that until just now, um, 
and I'm going by the meetings that I've had, um, and I'm going about that, you know, it's good to know that they say. I think the problem that people are saying is that unless it's enforced, part of that will enforce it. And I think that's the difference, right? I mean, um, you know, we want to see it happen. I mean, if it will help, I mean, again, it's a shameful number to 42% of Canadians. Um, if that's going to help so many people in so many lives. Um, so we're asking that because we're being told there'd be amendment in this bill, so that way we know that it will happen all over and not just uh, in one area. Okay, thank you. Thank you.